first thing, and, and I think right now it's kind of a weird time. Obviously, you know, like Coach Dyer said, I think he's the only one of us that's prepping for a game anytime in the immediate future. Um, but one of the things I'm always interested in as a young head coach myself is pr like practice structure. It's one of those things that you, you know, you don't, you kind of take for granted. Like usually like when you get involved with the program, you're not the head coach. So you do what that program's always done probably or whatever the head coach does. Um, and it's one of those things. I think the more people you're around, the more you realize, wow, there's a lot of different ways to functionally run a football practice. And especially at the high school level, you're going to deal with challenges that, you know, obviously running a CFL practice is one thing running a, a Bantam practice, you know, of summer kids or whatever is another thing. High school, you know, there's a lot of different realities there and, you know, challenges you have to deal with and, and guys with jobs and, and stuff like that and handling that. Um, what's one element and it can be of practices or meetings and it could be structure or it could be, you know, a certain period that you have that you think really helps benefit your players and, and, and lets your guys develop at a really high level. Um, you know, what's one part of either your practice structure or something you do in meetings, uh, could be off the field as well. Um, or even strength and conditioning you related that you think other coaches in the country for, could benefit from. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to take the lead on that one or has something that comes to mind right away. Yeah, no, I was just going to say the, like when you sent that question to me, it really got me thinking about, you know, minute per minute, uh, what we do for our, our practice schedule and that, you know, so it kind of, it was a nice little break in the day when I started uh, thinking about that stuff. I had trouble putting it down to kind of one specific thing that, that I think works efficiently and allows our athletes to develop efficiently. Uh, for me, running uh, our senior practices uh, I keep it highly structured like all of you do, I'm sure. Uh, no wasted time, no wasted reps is, a, is kind of a, a mantra that I kind of use with it. Uh, if, if, and we know if we let football players uh, waste time, they will gladly waste time, right? So um, I keep it structured, keep it focused on task, whichever section or segment we're in. Um, I found that including a special teams uh, segment each day was beneficial for us last season we played. I've been a part of teams before where um, your, your special teams practice was maybe toward the end of the week or, or one segment near the end of the week and that. I found that those days or when players knew that, okay, we're doing specials for half the, uh, half the practice, uh, again, they get into that wasted time mode and lack of focus. So what I've done uh, the past three years uh, with our senior team, uh, put in a special team segment every practice and we usually kind of run it mid practice just to break things up uh, you know kick off one day kick return the next day uh, punt you know field goal all that stuff uh, just a, a 15 minute uh, high intensity focus on that special team throughout uh, 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 that practice and, and I found that kept them focused on that and it was a nice way to break up kind of the routine of a, of a practice for them. The other thing I uh, started doing the last couple of seasons is uh, mid-practice conditioning. We all do conditioning in some way, shape, or form, but I put it in the middle of the practice, added a segment of that, a short segment, just to kind of tire the guys out before we roll into uh, uh, an indie drill uh, segment or, or into scrimmage. I wanted them to see how they can perform when they're a little gassed because you know that's going to happen in a game, right? Um, and, and that way they can feel comfortable with it. That way they know what to expect. And I found that it kind of increased their focus a bit too in the next segment. So run a little conditioning, move them on to uh, whether it's their indie period or whether, a, you know, a scrimmage period, uh, inside run, whatever, skelly. And I found it increased kind of their focus a little bit on, on the next task and, and uh, benefited us quite a bit in 2019. Awesome. There's some similar things for us as well. Uh, early in practice for us. Oh. oh, sorry about that. I was just going to encourage you to go because I know we might lose you. Can you hear me at all? Are you, yep. not, are you losing me? No, we got you. We got you. Okay. And are you seeing me okay? Because I'm seeing kind of everybody else in one direction and then I'm looking at my camera in the it, other direction. Yours is sideways. Okay. okay. We're, we're, we can hear you. I'm That's not probably the story of my life. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe the next time someone else talks, I'll twist it and go the other way. But sure. um, for us, some similar things. We always open practice with special teams. Uh, we actually would generally open practice with what we call live for five. So we come out of our stretch period and we would go uh, right into five plays of live scrimmage to start practice as a bit of a tone setter. And, um, you know, it was, it was generally a goal line period. 
uh, or a red zone period. So we do five plays of, of live scrimmaging. And the, we change the emphasis um, depending on the day, if it was a primary offensive or a primary defensive day. And then we jump into special teams. So our 15-minute special teams period at the start of practice would always be divided up into seven minutes of teaching time for that team. So, you know, if you were, um, you know, if you were a gunner on, on punt team or if you were a protector or an up back on punt team, like you'd be teaching different skills in that moment. Uh, and then the last seven minutes would be a team period for that special. So it get divided up evenly. And, you know, when you had uh, the big man special teams, because you, you use most of your linemen on, say, PAT field goal, uh, I would take um, all the skill guys uh, that weren't involved in kicking or holding, and they'd go down on another side, and they'd work on jet sweep timing or, or um, you know, uh, back shoulder fades or end zone jump balls, anything that was practical to their skill as opposed to having them just watch. Uh, you know, and just to, to echo what you guys were just saying earlier in terms of no waste of time. So we would always kind of kind of split that up in terms of how we did special teams. Uh, conditioning, we did it right before team period. We had like a 10-minute hard conditioning right before we started team for the same reason, exact same reason, just to get guys fatigued and get them in a position to do their scrimmaging at that point. Uh, in terms of big picture, you know, as I've talked to coaches around the country, uh, some, you know, I was just talking to the, the coach at uh, Dakota High School in Winnipeg, and he said, look, we got like 30 coaches, great. And then I've talked to some that have five coaches. So uh, one of the things we do for us is um, we have one coaching staff that handles our junior and our senior teams. So we have, we have one staff, you, you know, you each have a position. And when the varsity team is on the north side of the field practicing offense, the JV team is on the south side of the field practicing defense. So our coaches switch, the players don't switch. And then if a player is, is playing up or, you know, has, has a role kind of on both teams and they can kind of go back and forth and, the systems and terminology is the same. Uh, and then as far as off season for us, and I, I don't know how many of you are close to the border or not, but you know, we, we say to our kids all the time, work hard, which is a real nice thing to say, but what does that mean? And, and I thought it was really important for us about seven or eight years ago that we showed them what that looked like and put them in a, in a position where they could experience it. So in Seattle, which is a little over a two hour drive from us in a non COVID world. So appreciate we didn't have high school football here in COVID. I know most of you guys probably didn't. I actually coached my son's youth team last fall. They did have uh, an eight-game season, so that was a blast. Uh, he's 12 years old. But in a normal off-season for us, what I do every spring early in the off-season in January or February is I take 15 kids, um, five in, uh, incoming seniors, five incoming juniors, and five incoming sophomores, and I will take them down to a place called Ford Sports Performance in Seattle which is like a big time football factory that, uh, you know, the Seahawks train at college guys training for the combine. And then the top high school players in the state uh, are there. So they grind those guys hard. So I want our kids to go. They do a workout with them. The, the guy that runs the place is a friend of mine and he puts them through like a basically two hours of hell. And when it's done, now our kids at that moment know what hard work looks like. They know what it feels like and they can bring it back home with them. Uh, as opposed to just using some word and they don't have a reference point. I think it's important when our guys do that every year, it's a great team builder. Those guys are the people that I've, I've targeted as leaders. But when you look at overall program structure for us, that's one of the most beneficial things we do. Don't tell them to work hard, show them what that looks like. Yeah, no, that's, that's great coach. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, the common theme is definitely the temple and practice for us. That's uh, that's one thing I really preach is that temple that all of uh, all of us have mentioned so far. You know, establishing that routine and also posting practice plans ahead of time. I started doing that last year and I felt, I felt like our kids, you know, on our Edsby platform or whatever school platform we have, they came out on the field. They knew exactly what was happening at each segment, when and where they needed to be. And that just really increased our tempo practice, gave the kids, you know, a chance to get mentally prepared for practice. As you know, most of them are probably going to surf over to my page a little bit during math class and see what's going on. So I'm pretty sure you guys can appreciate that. Um, and then, you know, the big thing, I, you know, in my experience with Team Canada and coaching CIS was that situational football, really incorporating that into my practice plans has really helped. And I mean, like quick high tempo segments of, you know, what first and 10, second and short, medium and long might look like. And just having those team periods mixed in real short 10 plays or so, but having about four or five multiple team segments uh, incorporated in practice just to kind of mirror the, the tempo of what a game would be like. And at the same time, end those team segments with uh, special teams um, that have to come off, off the, off the sidelines. So for us and for me, I found uh, that's really been helpful. And then the one thing I started doing is uh, that kind of one special play or one scenario where it's late game, minute and a half left in the, you know, uh, on the clock, one timeout, 
a ball on the 35, let's, let, let's go, right? So those kind of situations have been really, really, really helpful for us. And then, of course, the conditioning has always been for me, the no huddle type for the offense. And then for the defense, it's, you know, uh, you know, those perfect tackle lines and, and, and uh, lines that we want to get them to when they're trying to go make a tackle, whether it's a, throwing a ball up on down the sideline and have everybody rush and then go and get the ball, that kind of stuff. So uh, I found that, in, in, you know, making it more game-like for conditioning has been really good for us. For us, um, I think it you know, starts with the, uh, I mean, the yearly calendar, the weekly calendar, uh, the routine. You know, we the kids expect, they know what to expect. They know what, uh, what drills and uh, what type of practice we're, we're running from uh, day one, day two, and, and, and day three. Uh, the meeting structure, I mean, we always start on time. Um, we always uh, hats off. Every meeting that we run, hats off. So the kids knows it. They know it. Uh, the, the topic that we're going to talk during those meetings, they expect it. So, for, for, for example, on Thursday night, uh, we, we review our protections, uh, the pressures and stuff like that. So on, on, on Monday night, they know on Tuesday and Wednesday. So they expect what topic we're going to go over during those meetings. Um, like Coach Leo said, we, we, we show the practice plan during meetings. So they expect uh, what type of practice. And, and they know, you know, if we have a special period, they, 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 they know about it. Uh, the, the, the practice structure, uh, we like to do, like, again, the same drills, the, the, the circuits. And if there's a new drill that we want to, uh, want to introduce at a certain time, then we'll, we'll usually try it during springtime. And, and if not, then during, uh, before the meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll show the kid. Uh, if we have a film on it from uh, NCA team or CIS team, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to, to show them if there's a new drill. Uh, tempo, that's something we coach as well. Uh, we say to the kid, okay, we, we want touch tempo during that period. But uh, every year at the beginning during training camp, that's something we're going to show them s- some clip of what touch tempo is and what touch tempo is not. You know, like we, when we say we don't want the quarterback to be touched, it's we don't want a quarterback to be touched. And, and so what we, show, we show them clip, you know. Uh, of good behaviors and sometimes not, not so good behaviors, but uh, when they see it, usually they, they kind of learn it. Um, there's there's something we've started uh, maybe in, in 2019, and I think it's pretty good for the coordinators or the play calling and the play callers is we script a second and seven. And we play four down football here, so uh, we script a second seven and we play the third down. So if it's uh, if it's third and long, because uh, defense stopped us on second and seven, then the, the OC needs to, to to make a third and long call. And if uh, we, we gain some yardage on offense, and then it's a third and medium, third and short. So so it gets it's good for the kids because they, they they have to play a certain situation, but for also for the play callers, it helps them getting organized right away and they're on their call sheet, uh, getting ready for for. Uh, for the game, so that's something we, we started a couple of years back, and it's uh, it's been good. It's been good to us. Um, I guess I can chime in. I, I so great stuff, guys. Um, you know, I think we dabble in a little bit of what everyone was talking about. Um, one thing I might add, like that, we found success in just you know over the course of a season. Teams typically find these lulls in the season where the routine, the monotony sort of gets to the players and even the coaches. And one thing we found success with is, is although we've got a nice plan for the week in terms of all the sessions we need to get in and, and everything I need to do in prep for the next game, but it is to break that typical kind of practice schedule. So what your typical Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday has been for six to eight weeks in a row that's been grinding on the players. And, you know, as an ex player, you know, you, you show up on Wednesday and it's all, I know it's Wednesday and you're kind of bummed out is, is just to splash in some, some, some breaks in that monotony and some breaks in that routine that still accomplishes your weekly goals and gets you where you need to be for game day, but just breaks up that routine for the players, keeps it fresh. Maybe it's something fun, but still productive. Maybe it's something really hard and nasty, but uh, it's something that just keeps them off guard and keeps them going because, um, you know, sometimes you can just tell when your, your team's running low on batteries, whether it's because you're on a big win streak or you're on a big losing streak, whatever it is, um, you've got to find ways to break up the team and break up that, that um, I guess, mode and, and zone they get into and that's been really helpful for us to you know sometimes this first week of October or something like that or after Thanksgiving or something along those lines that you find a time to, to just splash some energy into the team and, and and get them focused again yeah and I mean uh, 
you know, I can pretty much piggyback off of everything everyone said, and a lot of us are doing the same things. And, uh, you know, for me coming in, and this has been my first year at uh, Facey and with the COVID and everything going on, it was a big challenge to find a way to keep all the kids engaged, right? Because, you know, it's been 18 months that these kids haven't been doing really anything. And uh, um, so we're just been trying to find ways to keep kids engaged. And, and you know, I really challenged a lot of our uh, assistant coaches to take their groups and, you know, find ways to teach. And I found, you know, a big thing that helped us on offense, especially was, you know, and we're installing all these new, this new system is uh, like pulling film from all these different places. And the kids get to understand, like, you know, these schemes aren't the most challenging thing in the world, right? Like we're going to be running the same things as, you know, some of these CFL teams, some of these new sport teams and really get them understanding, you know, why we're doing these things and, uh, and trying to get them mentally just, you know, a little bit further. And then plus, you know, We've been trying to focus a lot on leadership things and, you know, things in the community because there's lots of things going on, right, um, you know, in the world and really trying to keep those kids, you know, up to date with all that stuff because, you know, really the goal for me as a high school coach is for everyone to have a good time and to, you know, leave better than when they were, right? So we just, we're really, really just trying to find ways to keep these kids engaged and then keep getting better, right? So I think that's the biggest thing. I could, I could reiterate everyone and, and just kind of talk about the same stuff, but that's been our biggest challenge, so.